Amen. Certainly, we thank God for his presence. We thank God for blessing us on today for just being in this house one more time. Amen. I know the weather, amen, is, is rainy. I know it's, it's dreary and things of that nature. And sometimes when we get uh, a, a situation where the weather is dreary, uh, you, you don't feel like doing much. You don't feel like uh, doing anything but just uh, sitting around or laying around and things of that nature. But I just thank God for uh, the press. I thank God for allowing us to press our way, amen, into his house once again and to uh, hear, amen, what he has for us. Amen. He is good to us. He is, uh, somebody said he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And that's absolutely true. God has blessed us and God is just moving uh, in our lives and we just give him praise and we give him glory and we give him honor. And on today, we just want to look at uh, a, a few scriptures uh, that God placed in my heart um, uh, even this morning to meditate on and, and focus on. Uh, and we're going to be coming from uh, Proverbs, Proverbs, the third chapter. Uh, and, and as we often say, it's a very uh, familiar scripture. It's very familiar. Amen. Uh, to uh, those who uh, study the Bible, those who read your Bible, amen, uh, on, on a, a constant or regular basis, it's very familiar. But sometimes we have to understand that not everybody reads God's word. Amen. So we have to explain it. We have to give it to them uh, as though that we're teaching it for the first time. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, just bear with me as I bring uh, those uh, ones that uh, may have not read this passage uh, up to speed a little bit. We find that, that uh, and, and, and with this uh, message on, on this morning, I found myself, you know, uh, talking to God. I found myself asking uh, God uh, things back and forth. And then uh, God's response to me was, do you trust me? All right, right. That was his response. Do you trust me? All right. And that's sort of the title of this message on the day. Do you trust him? Him meaning God, him meaning uh, the Lord. Uh, and and he, he just uh, simply, uh, do you trust me? And, and I, I started pondering that thing that, you know, uh, how uh, is it that <laughs> this question is being, you know, asked back to me, do I trust him? And, and, and I started thinking, I'm like, yes, Lord, I trust you. Yes, I trust you with, with, with everything. Yeah, I trust you with everything. my being, with, yeah. with all that I had, because yes. all that I had belonged to you anyway. Yes, Lord, you yes, know, I, I don't own anything. It, it all belongs Nothing. to you. You know, the Bible said the earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. And so, so uh, you know, he said, do you trust me? And I started thinking about situations in my life and things that are happening yet still uh, in, in my life and in the lives of people today. You know, and it's about trusting God. <laughs> It's about, uh, you know, putting our trust in God. And, and we know it segues into our faith. We know that, you know, we have to have faith in God and, and uh, faith and understanding that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Yes. But God wants to know, do you trust him? All right. That's what he wants to know uh, on today. And, and as we look at this um, uh, scriptures here that we're going to find in, in the book of uh, Proverbs, now we have to understand the writer of Proverbs. Now, real quick, just the writer of Proverbs was Solomon. Solomon, of course, was uh, the son of David and Bathsheba. Uh -huh. He was uh, that uh, second child, uh, if you will, between those two. Because the first one that they were going to have, the Lord uh, didn't allow that child to be born because of the circumstances behind it. Uh -huh. uh, behind that circumstance was, and, and again, this is for those who may have not understood Solomon's story or, or uh the occurrences of things that happen in the Bible. But in that uh, uh, relationship between David and Bathsheba, we understand that uh, uh, David uh, had uh, Uriah killed on the battlefield and all that because he wanted to cover up that, that child that they were going to have. And we understand that God then stepped in and punished them for that very act. He yeah. took that first child, didn't allow it to come to term. And then we, we find uh, that uh, David is now uh, asking God for, for like, forgiveness. God uh, forgave him, and uh, he takes uh, Sheba as wife, and they then produce Solomon. Uh -huh. Now, we find Solomon as uh, a David's son, and we find Solomon was that one that came about that said... Uh, you know, when it was time for him to rule or when it was time for him to uh, uh, reign and David was getting ready to go off the scene, David uh, 
uh, was, was, had done all that God wanted him to do. And we find that David wanted to build a temple for God. And God was like, look, David, you can't build the temple because there's too much blood on your hands. You know, you were a warring man, you were a fighting man, and this, that, and the other. And David's desire was, was good, but God wouldn't allow him to build it. So he said, your seed will build it, your, your son. And Solomon became that one who built the first temple, uh, you know, a brick and mortar, if you will, for God. He was that one that uh, built that beautiful temple that everybody came around to, to see. Those ones traveling from far and near came to see this temple. Yeah. But the thing that we need to understand, too, about Solomon is Solomon uh, is the wisest man in the Bible. Amen. Uh, uh, you know, it's not something that we give him that title. It's what uh, the Bible says. It's yeah. what uh, the Lord says. There's none wiser than Solomon. Yeah. Uh, and we find here that Solomon, even in his beginning stage, he took the throne at a very young age. Uh -huh. He took the throne at, you know, age maybe in his teens. I think it was either 14, between 14 and 15 or 16. He took the throne and he began to, to govern. Now, the thing about Solomon is he's having to govern a whole multitude of people. You know, at a young age. So he says to God and he talks to God. He tells him, he said, look, if you want me to govern these people, then you have to give me wisdom and understanding to go in and out before them. Amen. And because Solomon uh, asked this of God and because he said this, you know, not being greedy and saying, because God said, look, Solomon, ask me what you will. Whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Yes. Instead of Solomon saying, oh, give me riches and fame and, and all this other stuff. He said, look, I just want to be able to discern between your people. Let me go in and out before them. Yes. And because he did that, God honored him and said that he was going to bless him with such wisdom that there was not going to be anyone wiser. That there was not going to be any wisdom like this ever seen again. And we find that, that uh, Solomon uh, was that because his very next act was to uh, have to discern between whose child uh, was alive. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we understand that in the story. He had to deal with that. And I'm just giving you some information. Like I said, I have to teach this sometimes as if people have never heard about Solomon. Yeah. And I want you to understand his position right now. And his mindset when he's getting ready to talk to us in this third chapter. But Solomon, he had to, you know, exercise that thing in which God gave him. Now, let me uh, park here for just a second. When we ask God for something, we have to understand that God is going to give it to us. And then he's going to uh, uh, not so much put us through a test, but he's going to prove to us that we got it. Amen. Solomon, when he asked for that wisdom, God proved to Solomon that he had wisdom and he had such wisdom that when they came to him and said, Solomon, uh, the woman said, look, well, uh, this woman laid on her child and, and sort of smothered her child. And, wow. and then she got up before I woke up and put her uh, deceased baby under me and took my alive baby. And I, I know this is not my child. Uh -huh. And uh, he was like, uh, you know, so uh, Solomon, uh, uh, we, we need you to decide what's, you know, who's telling the truth. Yes. And the one is saying that uh, she's the mother and the other one is saying, no, that's my child. And Solomon looks at him and he's thinking and he used that same wisdom that he just asked God for. And he says, look, you know what? Take the child and cut it in half. Yeah. Uh -huh. Give this, give one half and the other yeah. one half. Yeah. The true mother, and see, this is the wisdom of the thing. He understood that the true mother was going to speak up. Uh -huh. The true mother was going to say, I'd rather my son go with this uh, woman and be alive than be split in two and, and be deceased as well. Uh -huh. And then the other mother, we know what she did. She was like, sure, that's good with me. You know, let's cut them in half and all that. And Solomon yeah. said, oh, no, you yeah. ain't the mother. This is the mother. Uh -huh. Get that baby back to her. So Solomon exercised what? God had just given him. Right, and we right. understand he became wise and he became uh, the wisest man. So when we look here in uh, the third chapter of, of Proverbs, it's, it's uh, sayings and teachings that Solomon is giving uh, as if he was talking to his son, as if he was talking to uh, someone that he's trying to impress upon uh, information uh, uh, on. And Solomon comes and he He's beginning to, you know, talk to them and he's beginning to, you know, sort of lay it out. And he's giving, uh, like I said, the perspective that he's talking to uh, his child and he's telling him about uh, telling them about values and rules and morals and, and behaviors and all those things in which to follow God. And, and that was key when you when when you can. Uh, uh, 
pour into your children the, the wisdom and the understanding of knowing who God is and what God can do and, and how God operates, it gives them a, a better outlook in life. Because they know that they can trust in God. They know that they can put their uh, dependence on God and not in man. Because man, let me tell you, we're going to let you down every time. Amen. You know, so Amen. It, it, it's, it's important when you have the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God that you can impart in something. He's just trying to give them some good morals and some good understandings on how to follow God. Uh -huh. So on today, we just want to focus a little bit on these uh, first, uh, on these uh, few verses. Now, we're going to be coming from Proverbs, the third chapter, verse 1 to 8, but we're going to focus on verses 5 through 8. And, and we may, like, park in verses 5 and 6, truly, uh -huh. but but uh, I want you to get a, an understanding of what Solomon is, is about to do. And we have to keep in mind the question of do you trust him? Uh -huh. We have to keep that in yeah, mind. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, when Solomon is, is talking and when he is uh, giving this uh, to us, we have to look at just how uh, uh, how much of a blessing these scriptures uh, can uh, fulfill or can bring us when we look at them. So let's, let's look at it real quick. Let's look at it. So it, it starts off here in, in this first verse. It says, my son. So he's uh, uh, addressing or he's, as I said before, relating it to as he's teaching his children or as he's teaching someone. He says, my, my son, uh, forget not my law. And he says, but let them, uh, but let thine heart keep uh, my commandments. And, and, and if you follow along, you need to underline the word heart because uh, heart uh, plays a, a very important part in this message on today. It's, it's, it's a heart motive. It's, it's, it's not so much a thinking thing or a thought thing. And we'll get to that in a minute. But he says, but thine heart keep, it, uh, keep my commandments. So again, he's saying, look, I'm giving you this, uh, these laws, I'm giving you these statutes, these morals, these principles, and I want you to bind them or keep them into your heart. Then he goes on and says, for the length of days, uh, for, he said, for a length of days and long life and peace shall be added unto you. When you have this word and you keep these commandments, he's saying, if you keep these things, you're going to know how to walk and govern yourself through life. Yeah. And because of that, you're going to know what not to do and, 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 and what to do to be able to succeed and be able to thrive. So he's telling him and he's teaching him and he's uh, showing him how he can uh, live a prosperous life or how he can have peace in his life. And, and the thing about it is when, when we see uh, uh, Solomon talking about, you know, long life and peace and he's talking about will be added unto, unto uh, the person. It's, he's trying to get us to, to understand that if we live in that frame of mind that we're going to continue to follow after God's commandments and, and God's laws and, and understand understand what God is, is saying for us, that these things are going to happen in our life. You're going to have peace. You're going to have long life. You're going to have uh, uh, these things added unto you. But then verse 3 says this. It says, let not mercy and truth uh, forsake thee. He uh -huh. said, bind them about thy neck. He yeah. said, write them uh, upon the tables of your heart. Again, there is that word heart again. He's, he's trying to uh, get his, his son to understand that uh, this, this mercy and this truth is not going to forsake you. And the mercy and truth that he's talking about comes from God. And we're going to see that in, in a few moments. He, he wants them to understand it. He said, bind it around thy neck. When you yeah. bind something, it means you tying it tight because you don't want it to go. Amen. You don't Amen. want it to be free from you. So, so when you bind it, it's what he's saying. Bind it around thy neck. He, keep that thing with you. Then he's saying, write it upon the tables of thine heart. When we write it upon the tables of our heart, it means we taking it into us. Right. It means that we're, we're, we're going to live by it. We're going to uh, uh, cherish it uh, uh, close to us. It's, it's going to be that thing that becomes dear to us. Yes. But then he goes on and he says in, in verse 4, he says, so shall thou uh, find favor and good understanding in the sight of who? Of God and of man. So he's telling them, he said, when you keep these commandments, you keep these statutes, he said, there's going to be uh, blessings for you. There's going to be mercy, truth. It, it ain't going to forsake you. Uh, you're going to understand this thing. He said, and when you bind it around your neck, meaning keeping it close to your heart, he said that you're going to have favor and not just favor with man, but favor and understanding with God. 
Amen. That's that's something there. That's something that, that we need to, you know, take and, and understand that, Lord, because I'm studying and focusing on your word and living by your word, you're showering me with favor. Yes. Now, we understand favor, and, and, you know, and we, we know that that's, that's and I often say, you know, favor, you know, <laughs> favor is for me. That's that's yes. what favor is, you know, it, it's, 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 it's for me. And, and I thank God for, for his favor and so many things that he has done in my life. But again, yes. we understand that he said thou shalt find favor and uh and good understanding in the sight of god but here's where we're going to get into the heart of uh this uh question that god uh, is, is asking us on today do you trust him because when we get into these uh next few verses we're going to see how uh this question is going to be answered through god's scriptures itself we're going to see how god is going to reveal these uh things uh to us and we're going to look at how these uh, scriptures are going to uh, unpack or, or unlock some, some truths in our life. So when we look here in this uh, verse 5, we're going to see how God is, is getting ready to uh, speak through Solomon to his son. Because it says this, it says, trust in the Lord with thine heart. Again, you know that heart thing. When we trust in God with our heart. We have to understand, and, and, and I've heard it, you know, uh, said uh, oftentimes, you know, uh, that, you know, how can we trust, uh, you know, things or trust people? And sometimes, let me tell you, sometimes it's hard to trust people. Amen. It is so hard to trust people, but, but uh, you know, you, you don't wait to see if you can trust them. Sometimes you just have to trust them. Uh, a writer, Ernest, Ernest uh, Hemingway, said the best way to find out if you can trust somebody is to trust them. All right, all right. You have to trust, uh, you know, I have to put my trust in you and, and then, you know, uh, see how you're going to handle that trust. Uh -huh. And sometimes we put trust in people and we put trust in things and, and we see how it's going to, you know, do for us. Yeah. You know, uh, if you put a, a, a board or across, you know, a, a ditch and you're trying to uh, cross over, you're, you're trusting, you're putting your trust in that board that it's going to get you from one side to the other. But first you have to put the board down there saying, I'm going to trust you because you supposed to support can carry some weight. And because you're supposed to do it, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to step out on that. All right. And then you step out on that board and, and, and you see if it's going to get you across. Right. Uh, and, and that's how we have to look at it. And, and, and I think that's, that's, that's so true. You know, sometimes you have to put your trust in something and then see how it's going to react. All right, all right. Amen. Amen. Hello here. Amen. I, I just want to, you know, teach this a little bit on today. So, so we find here, uh, you know, we, we have to look at how God is, is, is saying this to us and how God is posing this question to us. Do we trust him? You know, we, we have to uh, understand that and, and see that. When we look at the word trust and we define the word trust, trust is a reliability. It means a truth. It means the ability or strength in someone or something. So when you trust something and, and when you have trust in it, it's I'm relying on this thing to do what I need it to do. Right. I'm, I'm trusting in it and I believe that this thing is true to what I'm, I'm depending it to be or its ability is going to be sure for what I'm uh, trusting and leaning on it to be. And that's how uh, it, it is with God. We can be uh, assured that we can trust God in everything. Right. We can trust God with, with our life. We can trust yes, God yes, with yes. Uh, our, our substance. We can trust God with, you know, our, um, you know, with, with things that we have. We can trust God because God, and we can trust God, guess what, with our secrets. Amen. 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 We, we can trust God. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord, yes. have mercy. Let me get off that. You won't be telling nobody nothing if, <laughs> if I stay there. But we can trust God with our secrets. We can trust God with, with the inner things that, that we can't tell nobody and fearful that if we do expose that thing to somebody that they're going to use it in the wrong way. With God, we can trust God with it and God won't uh, you know misuse it. God won't take that trust and, and, and mess it up. But so, so we have to understand, I can rely. He's reliable. God is reliable, so I can trust in him when times of struggle and times of issues and things that I go through, I can trust God that, God, you're going to help me get over this. I can trust God that he'll be my bridge over the troubled waters where, where I can walk on him and I, I can trust that he's going to support my weight and the weight of my problems. 
Oh my goodness. But we have, uh, you know, uh, people that, you know, and it's, we have placed our trust in them and we found that they have betrayed that trust. We found that they uh, messed that trust up. We found that they have, uh, you know, uh, taken, you know, what I believed as, you know, trust in them. And they have, you know, spoiled it or ruined it because uh, uh, they, they didn't prove that they were trustworthy. Amen. But with God, we know that's the opposite. We, we have to understand that, you know, with this, we, we can have confidence and, and, and understanding and knowing that, you know, no matter what I'm going through, I can trust God. No matter what I'm going through, God has never let me down. It is, it's, and you know, it's things that I've asked him for that he hasn't given me, but it's not that he let me down. It was that I didn't need those things. All right, it was, all right, it was all uh, right, you know, yeah, he found that, yeah. you know, uh, if, if I, he had gave me these things, I wasn't going to use them for what he had, what the purpose was. Amen. So Amen. sometimes no is the best thing for us at times Amen. when we ask God for a thing. Oh, y'all get mad at me already. Because y'all saying, well, God, I want you to do X, Y, and Z. God, I need this. God, I want that. God, give me this. Give me that. And we want to say that all the time. And we expect God to give it to us. But sometimes God, his response to us may be no because he understands we don't need it. He understands, you know, the motives behind why we want it. Are you wanting it just to gloat? Are you wanting it just to, you know, shine or, or do whatever or, or, or whatever? But sometimes God will, his, his answer will be no. And we just have to accept that, that answer. But but here again, Solomon is, 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 is saying here in this fifth verse, he says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. He's trying to get us to, to, to see here how God will, will bless us. And, and the thing about it is when I trust God and I place it in God's hand, I can look for God to answer me. I can look for God to yes, give me exactly yes, what I need. Yes. And then at times when he does uh, unlock the thing that I asked him for, he always gives us so much more than what we asked for. Amen. Again, Amen. let's go back to Solomon in his beginning. Because Solomon just asked for wisdom, God said, Solomon, because you just asked for wisdom, I'm going to give you riches and fame. Yes. I'm going to give you these yes. things. And that's just like God. God is saying, if you trust me, and he said, and, and when I begin to uh, uh, bless you according to my will, he said, I'm going to give you more than what you even asked for. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory to his name. We, you know, we, we have to understand that. That's just like taking a, a, a ear of corn. We, we ask God, God, give me an a, a ear of corn. Give me something. And God gives us an ear of corn. But then God, we have to look at that corn and understand that God just gave us more than what we asked for. Because then if we take that corn and we dry it out a little bit and we pluck all those corners off, we can plant a whole field of corn. Amen. Amen. Oh, Y'all missed that. Amen. But we understand that God gives us more than what we ask for. Now, he pours us out blessings. He gives us gifts. He, he gives us those things. And, and guess what? Sometimes we don't even have to solicitate for him. We don't have to ask him. We don't have to beg him for him or whatever. God just gives us those things. I like to call that residual blessings. Those, those leftover blessings that God likes to, to, to give us. But then we, we understand that, that God is that one that we can put our trust in and he fully protects us and he fully gives us the things in which we need. Now, when it, when it comes to others, that's, you know, that's not so much, you know, because you trust in this person and you, you put your heart into it and you say, look, uh, I'm trusting you to, to care for this. I'm trusting you to do this, trusting you to do that. And at times that person may have let you down. Amen. But the thing about it is we still at some point in time, we got over that situation and said, I'm going to continue to trust somebody else again. Amen. I'm going to continue Amen. to trust. And, and we go about our life and we trust somebody else we, we go about our life because again if, if I don't know if you're able to, to to be able to handle my trust unless I give it to you All right. so we have to understand that but here uh, as we look in the, in the scripture Solomon is talking to his son and he's saying trust in the Lord that's what he's told him. He said, he said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now, the yes. thing about it is sometimes one word can change the meaning of everything. Amen. He yes. said, trust in the Lord. Yes. He didn't just say, trust the Lord. He said, trust in the Lord. Now, we have to look at what he's talking about with this in thing. When he's talking about trust in the Lord, we have to understand that what he's saying is uh, you have to have a, 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 an understanding that, that when, you are, when, when God is involved in it and when you're placed and your trust in God, it means that you're depending on him totally and you're depending on him to surround your situation. Amen. That's when you look at it in the, uh, uh, 
uh, vernacular of what in is, is is surrounding of something. It's, it's something surrounding or encumbering something. So when we look at it here in this verse, when uh, Solomon says, trust in the Lord with all the heart, he said, if you surround God with trust, if you surround God, uh, God's going to surround you because you're trusting him and he's going to surround and protect your heart. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd rather something surrounding me uh, all the way around me than partially. All right, all right. Because if my front is is uh, being protected, what's going on with my back? If my back is just being protected, what's going on with my front? So he's saying if you trust in the Lord, meaning you have to put that trust that God is going to surround the situation and God is going to protect your heart from those difficulties and those things that come in your life. So we have to understand that. But God is asking us again on, on today, do you trust me? That's the question that we need to answer. And that's the question that we need to keep within our, our hearts and our minds on today. But Solomon said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. He said, and lean not to thy own understanding. Look, sometimes when we trust in uh, uh, our, our understanding, it can mess us up. Amen. Amen. And it can mess up our, our, our mind because if, if we trust in what we see, you know, uh, then, you know, at times if, if that thing doesn't uh, begin to look like it should, we're going to end up falling. Amen. We're going to end up slipping. We're going to end up, you know, uh, in some type of, uh, you know, a worse situation than, than we found ourselves in. But we find that when God is saying, do you trust me? He's saying, look, if you trust me, then you won't lean to your own understanding. Amen. If you trust me, you will just understand that I am here and that I'm governing you and I'm leading and guiding you and I'm going to bless you and, and, and I know what's best for you and I know how to maneuver and do things to get you where you want to be and where he wants us to be. God is saying, if you just trust me, I will be, you know, uh, I, I, it will turn out better than what you think. All right, all right. But we find here that when we trust in God and we understand uh, what God is, is doing and what Solomon is trying to instill on, he said, don't lean to your own understanding. Sometimes we can't, we can't look at the surroundings. And I'm going to snatch Peter for just a second. Uh, when Peter and them was on that boat and they, they were uh, uh, going across the sea and they had some other work and Jesus said, you know what, y'all go ahead and, and go across the, the sea and I'll catch up with y'all later. Uh, Peter and, and, and those other disciples that went on that boat, they were going across and, and the Bible said there was a contrary storm. A storm yeah. started raging and, and it was unusual yeah. and we understand by the principle of an unusual contrary, it means it wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. It means that the enemy caused for a storm to come and shake and rattle their atmosphere yeah. because the, yeah. uh, but Jesus told them, I'll meet you on the other side. Now, yeah. they should have trusted in Jesus right there when he yeah. said, I'll meet you on the right. other side, yeah. meaning that yeah. he was going to meet them regardless. Yeah. Yeah. No, regardless of what storm came, regardless of what situation may try to hinder them, he said, I will meet y'all on the other side. Yeah. But in the midst of all that was going on, they were on a boat and the storm began to rage. Yeah. The Bible said that Jesus then, at the, the dark time at night, began to walk across the water to meet them where he needed to go. Uh -huh. He didn't need a boat, he didn't need an airplane, a helicopter, or, or anything to take him where he needed to go. Yeah. He said, "If you, uh, I told y'all I'm going to meet you on the other side. So he was just out taking a stroll. Yeah. He said, I got to stroll and catch up with my disciples. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm trying to get you to see this trust thing real quick. When, when Peter and them was out there, uh, they should have understood that as long as they kept rowing, as long as they kept yeah. pressing, yeah. as long as they kept heading towards that sea, uh, that, that uh, shore, that they were going to get to the other side. Yeah. But here's where the trust part comes in, yeah. sure enough. When Peter and them seen Christ walking on the water, they uh -huh. thought it was a ghost. They got fearful. We talked about it. We preached about it. Yeah. They got scared in their, their spirit and in their uh, uh, what, because of what they were seeing. And again, we, we can't focus. It's a heart thing. It's not a thinking thing. Right, we, we, right. Can't, we can't put this thing in our heart. Or, or, or Solomon would have said, trust in the Lord with all your thoughts. Right. No, he said with all your heart. Now, we understand that as they're there, they're, they're, their heart is being fearful. They're, they're, they're scared and, and all those things. But they have to, they, they should have remembered that Christ said, I'll meet you on the other side. Yes, yes, and send yes, him open yes. up blinding eyes, lame walk, yes, leper heal, and, and dead people come into life and all those stuff. And, and if he said, I'm going to meet you on the other side, I'm just going to ride the storm out. Yes, I'm just yes. going to ride the storm and I'm going to get to that other side eventually. But yes. there, we find that Peter is, is the, 
and them see Christ and they see him walking on the water. They think he's a ghost and they begin to yell out unto him. And, and, and Christ yells back to them, you know, uh, don't uh, be fearful. He says, uh, fear not, you know, it is I, it is it's me, it's Christ. It's, it's the one who told you I'll meet you on the other side. And, and then the thing about it is once you're meeting with somebody, that means you, you're going to meet up with them. That means you're going to come back in close proximity. Yeah. We find that Peter is, is the one that, that, that had enough uh, sense within him, or I would guess, to, to say to Christ, well, if it is you, bid me to come to you on this water. Yeah. Now, this is where trust is. And, and the same thing that God is asking us today, do you trust him? Uh -huh. That if we call on him in times of rough storms and times of water, are we going to step out and go to God when God said, look, just come to me. Don't yeah. worry about your storm. Don't, don't worry about what the surroundings is. Don't, don't worry about how it looks right now. Don't, don't worry about your financial state. Don't, don't worry about your physical health. Just come to me. And God is calling him. And God called Peter to come. And Peter stepped out with the heart first. Yeah. All right, all right. Watch this. When Christ called Peter to come, Peter stepped out with his heart first. Yeah. Peter yeah. stepped out yeah. onto water, which he understood yeah. uh, would, would not float. Would, uh, he was not supposed to be uh, defying gravity and all that. Peter stepped out with his heart first. Yeah. He stepped yeah. out when Christ called him to come. He stepped out with his heart, and he began to walk towards Christ. But look, let me tell you how your thoughts can get in the way. Right. Now, Peter is out there on the ocean, and he's walking towards Christ and his heart is being drawn to Christ and then Peter starts thinking about his situation. Yeah. Peter starts observing the things that was going on. He started observing the storms that was raging. He started observing the waves that was crashing up against the boat and all those things and he began to think about this is impossible for me to be standing out here in this water and be walking on this water. So now his thoughts got into his, into his way and he's no longer walking with his heart. He started walking with his mind and he started thinking about his situation. God don't want us thinking about our situation. If we put our trust in God, we have to leave that trust there and understand that God is able to bless us. God is able to move and do what needs to be done. And because of that, I trust in God with my whole heart. Like Solomon is trying to tell his son, if you trust God with your whole heart, it don't matter what it looks like. If I trust God with my whole heart, it don't matter what they say about it. It don't matter how difficult the situation is. I'm trusting God and I put my trust in God and because of that, but it's a heart thing and not a thought thing. When Peter started thinking about his situation and the surroundings around him, he, he, he failed to understand who God was at that particular time. He failed to understand that he was Ananias, Lord over everything. He, he, he failed to re remember that and he started thinking about his situation and guess what? The Bible said he started to sing. He started started to sink. So his trust was fading fast. Yeah. His trust was fleeting him when he started looking at his surroundings. Yeah, I know it's tough. I know you're going through something. I know difficulties in life is happening uh, to certain ones and, and comes here and there. But we have to understand that if we trust God, God is able to bring us out. God is able to bring us through. And he's able to bring us to the other side of what we're going through. I don't care what it is. But Peter is seeing this and, and his, 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 uh, his trust and, and, and we used this uh, before his faith began to, to fade and, 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 and he began to start to sink. But the thing about Peter is he understood that all I got to do is holler out. All I have to do is holler out because now he, he's going back to his heart thing and he's understanding that now I have trust in, in God that I'm sinking and, and I'm in this uh, sinking place and, and I'm, I'm going down and the storm is about to take me up, uh, take me under. And he believes now and again in his heart and he begins to cry out to Christ. And the Bible said immediately and instantaneously uh, when he and suddenly when he cried out unto Christ, Christ was right there to pick him up. He was right there to, to pick him up. So he had trust again in his heart that God would be able to save him out of his storm. Trust and believe we're going to go through some storms in our life. Trust and believe 
there's going to be some winds raging and, and some seas roaring and, and breakers are bashing and, 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 and just turmoil on every side. But if we just understand that I've got to trust God. God, I'm calling on you. I'm trusting you to break me up and break me out of this storm. Break me out of this situation that I find myself in. And when we trust God, just understand that God will do it every time. God will bring us out each and every time. He did say that he's Jehovah Shammah. He did say, I'm the Lord that is very present with you. Yes, he yes. is that one that's present. So in those times uh, when we're falling, in those times when we find ourselves uh, slipping or falling away or, or drowning in the, uh, the storm of life, we can just trust God and God will bring us out. Yes, yes. But not only does Solomon uh, uh, assure his son to put his trust in God, he also tells him how and, and, and who he should trust in. Yes. And, 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 and I like this uh, because he says here, he says, trust in the Lord with thine heart. He said, lean not to thy own understanding. Then he goes goes on and he says in all thy ways acknowledge him meaning him meaning God not Solomon himself he said in all thy ways acknowledge him and he Amen. said he shall give up and he shall direct thy path Amen. if we trust in God and we acknowledge God God will uh, lead us and God will guide us and he will direct our path Amen. but we have Amen. to put our trust first in God yes. and see that's why the God said try me prove me and he said won't I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing when you're trying him and, you, and he's saying prove me he's saying you can trust me and, and see how my trust and your trust in me works he said I'll open up windows of heaven I'll pour you out blessings but first guess what you have to trust Amen. first Amen. you have to trust God before these blessings come you have to trust God before these things come can I get my time please uh, we have to trust God and understand that God is able and that God is going to do it in our lives each and every time Hallelujah. But Solomon is trying to get his son to, to understand that, that when we look in the, the, when we read these things and when we understand these things, we have to put our trust in God and not uh, trust uh, in uh, our heart and everything else. Bless you. Uh, we, we just uh, have to put our trust in God. And when I put my trust in God, it means that God is going to surround me. It means that God is going to bless me. Yes. And when my heart is involved in it, it lets me know that when he said with all thy heart, he was trying to say, you got to uh, give it all to God. Yes. You got to get the yes. whole thing, yes. you, you know, you're not lacking anything, not, not giving a little bit or parts and pieces. Because trust and believe, we like to give parts and pieces of something. Amen. We like to give half of something. But he said, look, put all your, your, your trust in, in God. He said, put all that in, in God and, and, and watch God work and, and watch God uh, bring it to pass and, and watch God uh, move things out of your way and watch God bless you. But first, we have to trust. So the question again on today is, do you trust him? Do you trust him for what you're going through? Do you trust him for the situations that you find yourself in even on today? And the thing about it is, do you trust him that he's going to bless you and bring you out of what you're going through? Do you, are you uh, trusting God to understand that even in those myths, I may not be going through something uh, specifically right now, but I trust God that if I should happen to be attacked by the enemy, if I should happen to fall prey to the storms of life, Will God I understand that God is going to be there and God is going to bless me? So it's not about me thinking about this thing. I'm not putting my, my, my trust in the thought of something. I'm putting my trust in God himself. So he says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct that path. When I acknowledge God, I understand that I'm trusting him. And because I'm trusting him, he will lead me as if I'm blind. When, when, when somebody is blind, they're putting their trust in that person that's going to lead them. Amen. They're putting their trust in that, that, that seeing uh, uh, eye dog that's going to lead them where they need to go. Yeah. They're totally yeah. trusting. Why? Yeah. Because they can't see. All right. All they right. can't see which way to go. And that's just like us sometimes spiritually. We can't see which way to go. So I got to put my trust in God. And I got to have what they call blind faith. Because right. uh, if I continue to look at the situation, I'm going to think that it can't work. Yeah. If I continue to look at it, I'm going to uh, think that it won't come to pass but when I put my trust and faith in God with my heart I know that I'm God is leading me and then let God lead me blindly because he's going to lead me in the path of righteousness why because it's his namesake well, let me finish this thing up here it says uh, in uh, these last couple verses it says be not wise in thy own eyes he says fear the Lord Depart yeah. from evil. See, uh -huh. it's, it's, 
it, we, we can't be uh, uh, wise in our own eyes thinking that, you know, uh, we can uh, see this thing and see our way out and, and fix it and all that. When, when I'm telling you, your eyes are so deceptive. Yeah, yeah. Went to a museum with my daughter on, uh, I think it was Friday. And, and we were looking at the artwork and all that, and, and, and I began to explain to her about some art, and we was looking at a few pieces, and, and uh, as we were walking around, and, and, and we, we just started looking at things, and, and she was like, well, it's this, it's that. I said, no, walk up close to it. Uh -huh. We walk up close to it, it looked like something else. But yeah. when we stepped back and we got far back in the room and we looked at it, it, it painted a whole different picture of what we was uh, looking at. Uh -huh. and, and that's the thing that, that we have to understand. When we look at this thing, sometimes we're looking at it the wrong way. Amen. Sometimes Amen. we have to look Amen. at it with trust and understand uh, through faith that God is going to bring it about. I, I can't see the total picture, but when I step back and let God show me, then I can uh, see what God is trying to reveal to me. But, but again, he says, be not wise in thy own eyes. He said, fear the Lord and depart from evil. He's trying to instill in his son that if you trust in God, if you believe in God, and if you acknowledge him, God will lead and guide you. And he said, if you don't be wise, thinking that you know everything, because we got some people that think they know everything. Amen. Amen. Hello in this place. Amen. Think they know everything. You say something, they got an answer. They just, uh... Got a couple on the job. <laughs> Just know everything. Uh -huh. You don't know nothing. They, they, they know it all. Uh -huh. But be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. Mm -hmm. Last verse and we'll close. It says, uh, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Yes. Meaning it's going to be good for us. Meaning it's going to be uh, uh, that thing that's, that's pleasant to us. Yes. And we have to understand that when we when we understand uh, that God and we can put our trust in God, God will never let us down. Yes. God will never uh, let us down. He will never forsake us. He will never uh, allow us to fall or, or anything of the yes. sort. Yes. But God is asking again, do you trust him? Uh -huh. Do you trust him today to bring you out of what you're going through? Yes. Do you trust him today to, to continue to bless you in your situation? Yes, Do you trust yes, God today? Yes. That's God. I put my trust in you. Yes, Lord, I need yes, you to bless yes, uh, my, my children, God. I need you to do this and that for them. I need you to strengthen and turn it around and bless and move. And, and, and God said, look, you have to trust me. God said, if you trust me, he said, trust and believe. He said, I'm going to show you just who I am. I'm going to show you that I'm the God that's uh, very present. I'm the God that can do it each and every time. I'm the God that's going to bring it to pass. But you have to first lay your trust in God. Uh -huh. Is there anybody on today that want to trust God and, and, and have been trusting God? If you're here today and you want to understand that principle that I got to trust God, you ought to begin to give God some praise. You ought to begin to tell God all about it. God, I'm trusting you with this thing. God, I don't know who else to go to. I don't know who else to call on. I don't know who else to lean on. God, I'm trusting you to do it. God said, do you trust him on today? He said, do you trust me to bring it out? Do you trust me to bring it to pass? Do you trust me to get you out of what you got yourself into? God is saying, do you trust him on today? We have to trust God and not lean to our own understanding. We can't look at it and, 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 and try to think that we can solve it. We can't look at it and try to reason it away. We have to trust God because if we trust God, we understand that God will bless us and God will bring us out of what we're going through. So we, God again is saying, do you trust me? Do you trust him on today? Come on, let's stand to our feet. God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's trusting God. Hallelujah. It's trusting God in the midst of whatever we're going through. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's blessing Him for what we are going through. Yes, God. Sometimes the older folks used to say stuff like, oh, it's, it's dark and, you know, I'm just feeling my way. <laughs> We have to understand that in those times yes. in our life that it seems dark, it seems heavy, yes. amen, and it seems like we're feeling our way, we can trust God. Yes, we can Lord. trust God and God will lead us Thank and he will guide us. Come on right where we are, let's surrender to the Lord right now. Get that thing in your heart and mind that you're trusting God for. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Come on, don't lean to your own understanding. Get that thing in your heart and mind. Hallelujah. Yes, God.
God wants you to understand that he can do it for you on today. Yes, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask, Lord, now, Lord, that you would just bless us right now. God, we ask that you would touch each and every one, dear God, that has that special yes, request Lord. into yes. their heart, God. Lord, we're trusting on yes, you, dear God. Yes. Lord, we just thank you, dear God, because yes. we're locking it into our heart, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, for you said that man looks on the outward, God, but you look on the inward, God. You examine our heart, God. Yes, God. So, God, we ask that you examine our heart on today. Yes, God, as we're trusting in you, dear God, be that bridge over troubled water, God. Lord, uh, be that uh, port in the storm of life, dear God, that we can depend on you. God, be that shelter, dear God, in which we need to protect us, dear God. From the storms of life. Yes. So God, we just ask now, God, that you would just touch your people everywhere, yes. God. Strengthen them like never before, dear God. Someone's uh, faith was faltering, God. Someone's yes. trust was uh, beginning to uh, slip away, God. But God, we ask that you would just bless them right now, God. In the name of Jesus, dear God, increase their faith, dear God. Increase the trust in you, God. That as they trust you, God, that they see, Lord, that you are dependable, God. They see, Lord, that they can uh, lean on you, God. So God, we just ask that you would just do it on today, God. Lord, and we thank you in advance for all the blessings that you are going to bestow upon us, dear God. For all the things in which you are going to uh, do for us, God. We thank you right now, God. For them, dear God, and we trust and believe, dear God, that you have already done them. So, God, we again ask that you would look on those that are sick, those that are shut in on today. Stretch forth your healing hand and touch the bodies. God, we ask that you go into the prison walls right now, God. Touch those that's in the prison walls right now, God. Lord, we ask that you would just look on those, dear God, that are in the hospitals, dear God. Look on those, dear God, that are home, dear God. Lord, we ask that you would just heal like never before, God. Lord, and we just thank you right now for the unsaved person, dear God. Lord, that as that one day they may put their trust in you, dear God, and not in this world. Lord, that you may draw nigh to them, dear God. Lord, that you may bless them, save them, God, like like never before. God, we understand, Lord, that yes, when you God. save them, dear God, that yes, they are God. saved from the destruction. They are yes, saved Lord. from yes. the wiles and the tactics and the tricks of the yes, enemy. Lord. God, yes, and we Lord. just ask that you would just bless. Move by your spirit once again yes, in this place. God, and we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, look at somebody and tell them you love them. Come on, mean it in your heart. God bless you.